Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Photographers Inside the Photographer's Mind. On today's episode, we'll be joined by British-based photographer Jamie Windsor. We'll be talking about his photography career, his YouTube content and everything else in between. Take a look. Jamie Windsor, how are you doing? Hi, I am very good, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, okay. I can't complain. It's a little bit early here in Mexico, but not too early, so it's, uh, it's not a problem. It's, uh, <laughs> it's early afternoon here, so... Excellent. So you're, you're nice and awake, I hope. Uh, I am, yes. <laughs> early awake by the <laughs> afternoon. Excellent. Well, let's get going. Um, I always like to start from the beginning, in a photography sense, and mm -hmm. understand how the individual first got connected to photography. So if you'd like to give us a little bit of an insight how you first picked up a camera and kind of where it went from there, that'd be great. Well, um, um, my dad was quite into photography, not in any sort of professional sense, but he he had a, a DSLR and stuff and he was always sort of taking photos. So I kind of um, took an interest from him and it wasn't until I went to college that I kind of realized that um, I I had a bit more of a passion for it, I think, than I than I originally thought. Um, I I did a I did sort of art at A level and stuff, and I went on to a, um, a foundation course, which is what you do after A level if you want to do that at university. And photography um, just really grabbed me when I was there, and um, it was uh, this was back in the days of of film and doing your end developing in the dark room and stuff. And I just spent a lot of time in the dark room, took a lot of photos. Um, I did graphic design at university, but I always kept photography a big, a big part of it. And I, I sort of never really stopped doing that. Um, and I've just always had this kind of this passion for it. And it's kind of gone alongside my work, whatever I've been doing, whether I've been doing design work and I sort of moved a bit more into video work, um, a bit more sort of editing work. And, um, but I've always sort of kept photography as, as kind of part of it. And I set up a company with my friend, uh, in 2011, well, my friend who I went to uni to university with, and we shot kind of weddings and portraits. Um, and so it became a bit more of a, a business thing. And then I started uh, a YouTube channel, um, which just kind of took off a bit. And now that's kind of mainly what I do. I just do videos on YouTube about photography and photograph the odd wedding and odd, odd portrait session. Um, we, we will get into to, to yeah. the YouTube, um, mm kind of avenue that you went down but i just want to when you say because i've I, you know I've, I've i've seen your work and there's a lot of portraits there and weddings uh, and it's mm. great work fantastic photography thank uh, you by the way and w was it was it case of because you mentioned you you set up a business was it a case of portraits and weddings made the best business sense or was the kind of a genuine passion to shoot that kind of photography well it sort of just evolved naturally i've never i've never really had much of a plan in life i've just sort of gone along with what i was what i was interested in at the time and i used to just take photos all the time i um managed to sort of buy buy myself a, a dslr when um i'd started working for a bit as a designer and i just was photographing everything um Every time, you know, I went out with my friends, I'd take a camera along. I just, um, I kept kind of a sort of photo diary of everything. And so then my friends started to get married and they, so, sort of, um, so I had a few weddings where I just shot weddings for friends mm -hmm. and I just really enjoyed it. And the, the photographs seemed to sort of work quite well i quite enjoyed i think weddings was an interesting was an interesting thing for me because it it there's no one sort of discipline you use because it's a bit kind of 
it's a bit street photography esque in your in that you're kind of going around sort of hiding out the way getting these candid moments it's a bit portrait photography it's a bit architecture when you're taking photos of the venues it's a bit um sort of macro and stuff when you're sort of taking photos of details and you just you just become kind of a storyteller and i can't i kind of like that aspect of it and um so we decided to set up this business when i think one of my old work colleagues got in contact with me and said i've seen your photographs that you that you've put on facebook and stuff i really like your work i want someone to photograph our wedding but i really like your style what, do you have you ever shot a wedding and i was like well i've shot a few for a couple of friends yeah. um but and so we decided to sort of set up a proper business and and do it from there and weddings really work very much through word of mouth so then it was friends of theirs who liked the photographs then friends of theirs then you know friends of friends of friends then it just kind of go, goes on like that and that's kind of how we just sort of worked as a business um and we we were originally kind of just doing weddings but we were doing um i've always had a real passion for portraits so we were doing a lot of sort of portrait sessions as well and then we sort of combined that into one to one business but um I, i've never liked to sort of i think focus down on any one particular sort of aspect of of uh photography in any way um i like to keep it quite open so but I like to learn a lot of different disciplines, I suppose. I like to, um, I like to know how to do things. So I like to know how to, um, I think that might be why weddings, uh, kind of grabbed me quite a lot, but, um, I also, you know, want to know how to sort of light portrait sessions and things like that. So, um, I, I sort of made it a mission to kind of, to learn things and then kind of move on to the next thing in a way. And as you say, you're now doing predominantly YouTube. Mm -hmm. When you made that decision to to start making video content, was yeah. was there kind of a clear strategy in the beginning, or was it a case of just putting content on the internet for the fun of it, or, or was it always kind of like business minded? Um, there, it wasn't planned at all. It was um, it, well, not up until the point, but uh, it was just. Uh, that I was working freelance as a designer and I would have time when I was very busy and then times when I was not working for a little while because I was also managing sort of doing a, a photography business at the same time. So I'd work maybe a bit less in the summer months as a, as a designer when I did shop more weddings and dedicate a bit more time to that and then kind of flip back between the two I was working for a lot of um, design agencies in the center of London and kind of managing my time through that but then there'd be the odd week or so when I just wouldn't have work at that particular time and so I decided to just start making some YouTube videos just out of boredom more than anything else really but I got a little bit of a of a following and I I noticed that on YouTube there was a lot of emphasis on on gear and uh, mm -hmm. which is great uh, it's a, you know it's very important to have all that stuff but I f felt from what I had learnt about photography through through college and my own reading and stuff and uh I felt that a lot of the things weren't really there as such. And so I thought I'd take a slightly different approach and just see kind of how it went on. And, um, and that's more from a technical point rather than a, more, a gear point. Is that what you mean? Uh, well, more from a, more from an artistic point, I suppose, more from looking at kind of, um, a slightly more maybe philosophical way of looking at it. I'd, I don't know, just, um, but I wanted to keep it quite broad and open again. Um, so I just sort of started making videos. I started out doing kind of lens reviews and stuff, but then found that I was more interested in, um, looking at, 
uh, more sort of interesting subjects that interested me uh, that maybe were maybe were uh, sort of associated with photography. So maybe maybe ethical questions or 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 um, a look more at kind of artistic techniques or something things or maybe di different approaches or just just trying to yeah. in a way just trying to to uh make people just sort of just think a little bit i suppose rather than just sort of follow a formula and um so i just started doing that and it started to get a bit of uh following and then i made one video that just sort of seemed to go uh, pretty viral and had about a million views within a couple of months. And from that, my channel sort of started to take off a bit more. Yeah. And the work that I was doing as a designer had got less and less fun as the economy had changed. Cause I originally was working more in sort of arts and education and it was a lot more, I suppose things that I had could develop a bit more of an interest in and as as uh the financial kind of market changed things the the work that I was um being sort of commissioned for was was for for stockbrokers and for oil companies and things that I just had no sort of desire to <laughs> to do anything um for and boring it sounds like you're trying to say i, I, well, I can tell that you're a very polite guy but it, <laughs> it sounds like what you're trying to say it was boring gigs yeah and <laughs> boring and just not not i just didn't feel i felt it was just being i felt the work it was just wait it was just making money for people with, without any kind of way to sort of better the world in any way i suppose and there was one particular moment when I was working for a, a stockbroker's, um, and, I, and again, I was doing some photography for them. Um, well, for, for, I was doing some photography for a studio that we'd done a big branding project on for them. And we'd done all these, um, sort of internal graphics. And, uh, so I was going into, to, to photograph them in situ and, to, to create a bit of a case study for the design studio. And as soon as I got my cameras out, all these stockbrokers kind of rushed over and were going, oh, is that, uh, you know, is that, oh, you've got, have you got that? I've got the 85 mil, oh, yeah, I've got that one. And I've also got, <laughs> and they had like much, much more equipment than I could ever dream of. And uh, occasionally we'd, we'd need a photo of something and they'd send one over. I'd look at the metadata and it was shot on like a Leica M or something and it was, <laughs> but but it wasn't it the it wasn't a particularly good uh photo <laughs> it was just these yeah. people um were buying all these cameras and i just sort of realized that these people do not like what they're doing and they are desperate for this um sort of artistic sort of output and so yeah. and so photography has been kind of this avenue for them that they're trying to sort of get into and then it, it just sort of made me think kind of like, well, you know, what am I, what's the point of like working and the point of working seemed to be to, to earn a living, but an, uh, earning a living is to the point of that is to have kind of a happy life. Uh, but if you spend yeah. it doing something that you're not, you're not enjoying, then it kind of defeats the, it's like you've lost the original point of it. Yeah. And so at that point I just decided just to stop work um and just just make YouTube videos which was a bit of a, a leap I mean I could always go back to it it was just sort of I just stopped taking on on clients and had you had, sorry to interject but yeah. did, did you do that at a point where YouTube was bringing you in income or did you kind of just like go let's just take the risk and see what happens um it, yeah it started to bringing bring in an income it was substantially less than i was earning through being a designer but i sort of thought if i keep pushing this then hopefully i'll get it up to a stage where i can i can sort of live off this and as yeah. as, as, far as 
as long as I can live off this, then I'm really enjoying being my own sort of, I'm really enjoying using my, my, my sort of skills for editing and things, but really being interested in the subjects I'm talking about and really be, being able to take my passion for photography and also, I mean, it was partly a journey for me as well. Um, just because I, I just wanted to sort of keep learning and there were so many photographers who I was interested in and stuff. And the act of making one of my YouTube videos is, is about kind of researching a lot and reading up and I like that that's become my job now to sort of educate myself on something as well as, as well as kind of try and make sort of educational content for, for other people. That's awesome. Yeah. And I also just really like and YouTube. I just think it's a great kind of, um, it's great platform and it's, um, it's a very sort of non elitist kind of, uh, way that, uh, you know, people can, people can learn things. And, and it's, it, it's great because it's so accessible to everyone, but yeah, one of the things that I sometimes worry about mm -hmm. you know i've been myself i've been doing photography for 10 years and you've clearly got a, a a rich history in it as well sometimes because when we were growing up mm -hmm. um you know when we got our tuition if you will you know that our, our tutors they they would have had credentials and gone through certain you know um yeah. tests if you will to verify that they were able to give an education now anyone can put something out on, on YouTube and yes. maybe sometimes the consumer doesn't know that or doesn't have the time to go and do their research. Now that's obviously not the case with you, but for, for, for the people who do watch YouTube and go to YouTube for photography mm. knowledge and tutorials, like what kind of advice would you give the consumer to ensure that the person that is speaking to them isn't just someone with a great camera and great lighting and some good SEO skills. They're actually someone who, knows what they're talking about and, and, and giving something of actual value. Well, I mean, that, that is a problem. And I, I wouldn't advocate YouTube being your only source of, of learning. I'd use it maybe mm -hmm. as a catalyst to, um, find out where to look for more things. So, you know, as well as YouTube, read books, you know, go to galleries, look, look at, yeah. um, follow what is um, being kind of published and stuff. Um, but also it depends on why you're doing it because a lot of people do photography just because they enjoy it. And if they find someone on YouTube who they identify with, or they, you know, they like, and maybe that person's not qualified, maybe they're not giving the best advice, but if the person is enjoying kind of following their, tutorials or is inspired by them and it brings them kind of joy then i've got no problem with that in it um but it, it depends um if you're looking specifically to educate yourself in a certain area i would yeah i mean it's just like with all information really i mean the, it's just the internet in general and all information anyone can say anything it's a completely you know, it's a, it's a massive egalitarian platform and mm -hmm. there are massive pros and massive cons with that. Um, so the, the, uh, you know, verifying information, um, I think it, it's a difficult, there's no, there's no one simple answer. I think just, um, learn from a variety of sources would be my advice don't just Let, watch one youtuber and think that they know everything let's, I let's be hypothetical yeah. <laughs> no and not, not no one should know everything because no, that's the I mean, that's the beauty of always evolving and always learning right but yeah i mean i mean that's something i, I kind of worry about because i i as i said i it's sort of part of a, a journey of learning for me mm -hmm. um and i don't the the sort of the way people kind of ascribe this sort of um 
this this value onto what I say, uh, and I, I I never sort of claim to be to be anything. It's sort of other people kind of seem to seem to sort of kind of give you that that label, um, but. You know, uh, I I'm very much that's something you know I'm I, I worry about because you know I don't I don't necessarily know what I'm talking about. A lot of it's just my opinion, and I yeah. try and present present it as my opinion. Um, and if or if you read the comments, a lot of people disagree with a lot of what I say, and so it's um, you know a lot of people agree, a lot of people disagree. It's just that's it's um, that's the internet for you, but. Um, I, I don't. Um, I, I think I, I I do worry that that people put too much stock in in what I say sometimes because I don't I don't really I I just think I'm just giving my opinion and I like kind of just just to, just to sort of be there with other people's opinions as well. I actually kind of think that's the the wonderful thing about photography and art in general i think mm. you know the technical aspect of photography not i'm not saying it's easy but you can pick it up if you put the time in yeah but beyond that it's it is it does become more about the philosophical aspect the emotional aspect mm -hmm. and that's where it does kind of start becoming opinion over fact and if people are connecting to what you say then i don't really see a problem in that to be honest with you, you know, if, if, if people can take something out of your opinion and, you know, the ethics of street photographer, f photography, for example, which mm. is everyone's got their own ethics. And, yeah. you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time arguing about that with people <laughs> about what's right and what's wrong. And really, you know, there's, there's no fundamental answer, but if you can get people to connect to what you're saying, then you're on the right path, really. And, and I wonder, yeah. because you said about the comments. Mm. and you you know so some of your videos are, are, are well into the millions in terms of views mm -hmm. which is which is great it's crazy when you think about it millions of people yeah uh <laughs> i i am um, one of uh one of my friends who's also a youtuber called pablo he's um he he also uh he's he's also an opera singer and we nice. often go out in the center of london he and he'll go in to to he'll pop into work. He works at, uh, for the ENO, um, and that's the English National Opera. And um, we went. He took me into the onto the stage once. It was just empty theatre, and we were talking about kind of going. Oh, I've only got like you know ten thousand views on this, and he's like, this theatre holds like three thousand people. And then yeah. you sort of look at it; and it's it's just so many people, and you kind of think. Yeah. If if only th if like three thousand people watch my video, that's all these people, and that's yeah. that's kind of crazy. And then you, you kind great. of yeah. you kind of lose the context when it gets into the to the millions or even tens of thousands. It's um, I think it's easy to sort of look at some of the kind of bigger YouTubers and go, "Oh, they're getting twenty six million in the first day or something." <laughs> but um, it's just it's um. It's not, you know, it's, there's, there's, there's more than the numbers as well, but it's just, um, it's, yeah, you do need to keep in contact that actually how many people that is. And it's a good point because I think, you know, a lot of people, photographers in, in all genres of, of life, but we'll, we'll stick to photography. A lot of photographers mm. try and make that transition into YouTube and you see so many give up so quickly because you know they'll 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 compare themselves to say the likes of you they'll be like well Jamie Windsor's getting 2 to 3 million views on a video and I've just got 5000 and and you're right it's like if 5000 people turned up to your talk on photography yeah it would blow your mind it would, yeah. you know it would blow anyone's like there's 5000 people here listening but yet people give up so easily and in in the early days of youtube of your youtube uh, mm. uh journey you know i imagine it, it wasn't millions of views straight away no. how did you how did you get through those initial kind of i don't want to say dark days but but when you were building and the numbers weren't there what kept you going well i i, I suppose i'm i'm lucky in that i didn't get into it in order to with with much of an agenda 
mm-hmm. so I wasn't really paying that much attention to the views until they started to to hit, um, you know, co- uh, sort of a. I don't know. I suppose um, it's all about it's all about the direction you're moving in, really, mm-hmm. because uh, it, it's interesting hearing you. To say like someone who's looking at like my channel whereas i think of my channel as fairly small but then okay. i'm looking at like uh peter mckinnon and stuff and thinking you know he's got like a a massive well you know i'm a ridiculous I'm, amount <laughs> yeah i see i mean i'm i'm like you know a, what like a tenth or i don't know eighth or whatever he, he's got i don't no, I mean, he's got at the moment. I can just but... imagine you putting your head down in shame when you're telling people only two million people watched one of your videos. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I don't, I don't think, it, yeah, I, it's not. Um, I don't even. I mean, most of my videos don't get that. Most of my videos get. Um, I don't. Know, I, I say around about around about fifty thousand views is is the kind of my average. I think probably somewhere around B- there. Bigger than most Premier League football stadiums. E- yes <laughs> i yeah interesting when you when you say it like that um but you know but then there's there's the depth of engagement as well you know yes um there's not it's not about just um how many people you're reaching it's how many people who like who uh who sort of listen to what you're saying or or yeah. you know how how invested they are in you um and i I don't particularly have a desire to be, you know, really famous or anything. It's or have have those sort of millions of views. It's I just want to, uh, you know, earn enough to support myself and my kids and yep. to um, enjoy what I'm doing and yep. hopefully be do something useful in the world and not not counterproductive so to to sort of pass on knowledge to teach people things to um but i don't think i you know i don't think i really do teach people that much stuff to be honest i because i you know i get i get so many messages saying saying things like um um i've i've learned so much from you and my photography has improved so much but i think it's just because they've they've just been teaching themselves and um one one comment i get a lot is that um my videos make people want to go out and take photos um which is which is i think my main kind of goal just to stop stop worrying about whether you you know should you upgrade to the r5 or whatever or you know and and just and just take what you've got and go out and make images because that's that's gonna get you much better results that practice than than upgrading to a better camera or anything like that and i I think you raise a good point there or or you mentioned something and this this is one of the reasons why i personally throughout this podcast want to speak to photographers that are doing youtube because i Mm. think sometimes we'll just you know there's an expression youtube photographers and i think sometimes they get a an, a hard kind of rep, uh, yeah. unfair at times, and I think a lot of people believe, oh, they're just you know, they just want hits and they just want views and they just want attention. But you know, I think it's important that we have this space where you can say, hey, you know, it's while well, that's great, you know, it's mm-hmm. not the main motive. If if I can influence, you know, photographers in some way, inspire them in some way, then that's much more rewarding as long as i can you know keep the lights on at home and everything that's more rewarding uh than kind of the attention that comes with being a a social media influencer if you will i'm you know not a lot of people like that term (laughs) but do what do you ever feel that do you ever feel that there's kind of it's difficult to get the respect from maybe some hardcore industry photographers because you're so prominent on social media uh i'd say it goes beyond photography i think when you know that question of like oh you know well what do you do comes up all the time and there's this massive divide between if you say well actually i'm 
I'm a YouTuber, <laughs> um, you get uh, about about half the people think you're like the coolest person who's ever lived, and about half the people think you're like the scum of the earth. <laughs> There's very little sort of middle middle ground. Um, yeah, yeah. I try to I try to kind of avoid saying it a lot of the time. I just sort of say oh, I'm a uh, I'm kind of, I, I make videos or I make, you know, and then I, I sort of, I tell, I don't, I don't hide it, but I don't, um, I don't kind of, I don't necessarily advertise it, but, um, I think, uh, what YouTube's very new and with, with all new things, there is skepticism and mm -hmm. that's just part of, you know, people, people don't like new things. So it's just, yeah. um, uh, you know, when it, cause it sort of, you know, it challenges their worldview and sort of tells people they need to sort of adapt and update. And, um, so people fight against it. So I, I don't take it that personally. I think when it's the best thing to do, um, yeah. try and let it, you know, go over your head yeah. as, as best you can. Yeah. In, in terms of YouTube, mm -hmm. like most social media, um, a lot of it is based on algorithms, which, you know, you yeah. see a lot of people in in all genres they create content that kind of plays into the hands of the YouTube algorithm you mm -hmm. know five tips for doing this or yeah you know, and i wonder do you ever how do you find the balance between kind of yes doing what the system kind of wants you to do but also having like content that's not necessarily seo or algorithm friendly but it's original like, do you, do you try and, are you constantly thinking about that balance or? Yes. And, ha and how do you, how do you deal with it? Um, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult thing to, to deal with. Um, I don't think it's necessarily the content that's the issue. It's mm -hmm. to do with how you title it and how you, um, and you know, the, the thumbnail you use and the combination of, of those two really, um, mm -hmm. If content is good, um, then eventually it will get kind of discovered. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's, but even just, you know, good, good content is um, a, a massive kind of subject in itself because sometimes information could be valuable maybe yeah. it's not presented in an engaging way yeah oh, and similarly vice versa you might have a very engaging video that doesn't have that much useful information in it and it's it's a question of sort of balancing that because if you can there's the algorithm the algorithm sort of is it's you know it's multifaceted there it's a, mm -hmm. it's not just to do with how many people click stuff it's also to do with how how long they watch the video for whether they click on more stuff after they've watched it um so if you can engage someone with with that first video and they might mm -hmm. go and discover the rest of your channel or something then then that's you know that's you know, big big plus points with the algorithm but you do have to get that that you have, you have to get people to initially click things and there are some youtubers who are just really good at that and yeah um it's something i've had to think about more and more uh especially when you have something like a sponsor and um, because this when you have a sponsor they there are conditions often so they will they will say you need to have so many thousand views within the first month okay and that's part of the contract so okay. there are titles which will get you a lot of a lot of views straight away but may may not have that longevity and okay. then there's some sometimes the content will take a little while to kind of um maybe gain that traction but then will later on become quite an asset for your channel as people as the views keep sort of building and building on it yeah um it's I, there is a way to do it without compromising yourself. Um, it, it, it's interesting. I, I just want to just while, while you said it, you know, in terms of when you have sponsors, 
and feel free to pass on this question because I appreciate, mm. you know, you have to think from a, um, yeah. a business sp- uh, standpoint in a relationship. But it, when you said about the sponsors and what their expectations are, it kind of reminded me of when you were speaking about when you were working av- in advertising. Yeah. Uh, do you, so when you're making, say, a video, and it's it's just going to be natural that you do this and that everyone does this, mm-hmm. and you're thinking, how do I meet the brief of the sponsor, so to speak? Yeah. Do you, do you kind of feel you lose a little bit of your creative license and it, does that bother you in any way? I, it needs to be handled carefully. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, I don't, while the offer is there from many people, I don't sponsor every video. Okay. And at the moment I have put my sponsorship with people on hold because I've just moved house and I don't want to be kind of, the, the main compromise I find is the deadline, having to get a mm-hmm. video out by a date because I don't want to compromise on my content yep. um, because I have to rush a certain bit of it or or um, maybe pick a, a subject that I wasn't quite ready to talk about or, you know, the, the sort of video that have been sort of... A, you know, so a subject I've been developing over months, but ha- it's not quite there yet, but I have to sort of get it out. Um, mm-hmm. The sponsors I take on are, I, I only take on um, products I, I actually like. Um, I'm lucky to have a lot of offers from different people, so I can sort of pick and choose. And I'm also, uh, they also, they give a very rigid kind of set of, um, guidelines, but you, they're, they're actually very flexible. So you, you go back and go, that's not going to work. I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to do that. And they're going to go, yeah, it's fine. Just do what works for you. Cause I think ultimately they know that if it appears that they've interfered in your format mm. or anyway, anyway, it's not going to go down well for them. So. Yeah most um most of the sponsorship um guidelines from m- most places say oh you need to talk about it within within the first uh three minutes of the video and yep. i just say that with the way i do my videos that isn't going to work i'm going to put it at the end and they go okay you know that that's fine that's that's you you do what what works for you yeah um and the yeah, I were, you know, I've, I, I'm lucky to be in a, a position where I, I have, I have in, enough people wanting to sponsor me that I can sort of say no to things without worrying about what the repercussions will be. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not, it's not a big problem for me. And I only, I only take on sponsorships when I'm in a good place to get regular videos out. Um, and sometimes it's good to have that, that impetus to sort of, uh, push me a little bit because yeah. I don't always, um, sometimes I can get, you know, I think what, when you work on your own as well, uh, you can, you can get in that mindset sometimes where you just go down an avenue that you need sort of being sort of drawn, drawn out of a little bit and you need to sort of just make a decision and just run yeah. with it not overthink it just go with your gut feeling on something because that's generally you know the the way the better the better stuff kind of happens because you know you you feel it for a reason and so so sometimes it's better to have that little little push but it it is uh you know i i it, it does it does affect the content in a minimal way but but mainly yeah. just because of the de- the deadlines and in terms of, you know, video creation is, is time consuming and sometimes can yes. be tedious. Mm-hmm. What keeps you kind of motivated? Maybe it's the, the income, who knows, but uh, you'll be able to answer this. But in those times where you are a little bit like, I don't know what direction to go in, or I just don't have that creative motivation right now to keep pushing out the videos. Mm-hmm. How do you overcome that? Um. I've, I mean, I've actually made videos on sort of what to do if you hit this sort of 
if you hit this kind of rock. thing. So I need to take my yeah. own advice on this, which is okay. just just to stop, just stop for a bit, um, just go to, um, just take a break, step back from a bit, uh, a bit, because it, it does come back that that um, that desire. Uh, often, often I'll have videos that are just sort of going along in the background that um maybe it's uh, a video that i've made about um some presets that i'm gonna release uh to sort of help fund the channel but also mm -hmm. um you know because people, people keep asking me for that as well you know so if i ever say oh, i'm gonna do a pack like this then just yeah. get inundated with messages when are you releasing them i really want them for this project is that they're gonna be out yeah. for this and and um so i mean they're fairly straightforward to make and it, doing things like like making presets is 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 enough of a enough of a step away from editing for me yeah. to so so maybe i'll i'll concentrate on making something that i'm going to um that i'm going to 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 sell to help fund um the videos and also, if I do stuff like that, then I don't have to take on as many sponsorships because I can, um, I can, you know, uh, that, that brings in money in a different way. So I can, I'm, I'm sort of freer to, to, to then focus on those videos that I want to make that maybe shouldn't have sponsorships on them. Um, and be more authentic. Yeah. Cause some, and sometimes there are subjects that are a little contentious, um, that maybe, which I try to steer clear of mainly, but um, sometimes uh, there are things which aren't appropriate for sponsors. So I don't, I don't kind of want to put a sponsorship on that because it just, it just seems wrong. Do, do you try and stay away from those topics because it can kind of impact you in terms of revenue or is it you like, you prefer not to be, controversial or you know um there there's a there's a few reasons it, it does it does impact revenue because you can't kind of put adverts on it or anything so you basically make yeah. a video without um any you don't get any money from that video um yeah so you just have to sort of make it for for love basically um and uh, but you know, but, but you know, every video there, there's a bigger picture at play. You know, every, everything is is um, it's all part of your channel, and um, so it does it does kind of help to have it there. I don't I don't want to be too I don't want to be too I think didactic maybe in what I'm saying, and I try just to aren't ask questions rather than to tell people what to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I think what, what happens a lot of the time is people, people hear stuff that I don't say. Uh, so I've got, I've got a video on uh, that talks about the ethics of street photography. And I don't really say much in that video, except for, you know, examine your own ethics and what, yeah. what in your own, find your own level you're comfortable with. But, yeah people really hear me sort of telling them what to do in that video and they get very angry about it and yep. <laughs> so i don't i don't want to kind of you know poke that fire too much because um it's you know while you know on a good day i'm up you know i'm up for a sort of healthy debate some you know I, sometimes you just you have those days where you've got a lot of stuff going on or you know those uh, you know, because you have to get on with your life, and if every every morning you're getting angry messages sort of sent to you, yeah. sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's not it's not kind of what you want to what you want to hear right at that point. It's not and a great start to the day, is it? <laughs> no, and I'd rather just try and sort of stay positive about stuff. I I like um, there's there's very little little point in being negative about things often because I don't mm -hmm. think you really if you want to change someone's opinion on something, you want them to question things to tell people, you know, to sort of straight up say kind of you're wrong about this mm -hmm. or you're doing this wrong. It's not, I don't think it's very motivating for people. So I think the way to do it is to, is to be more positive about 
what you like and yeah. to um to be very um to i think often to to just suggest things to make people think of things themselves rather yeah. than than telling people things and then um yeah and I, i'm not sure that i'm right on on things so i i like to i like to just sort of pose questions i think rather than rather than tell people too much and, stuff. and uh, one thing that i'd like to ask is mm -hmm. social media whether you're you're a creator or a consumer you know, mm. and I include, you know, YouTube as part of social media. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a way that we can all connect and it's it's a wonderful thing. Uh, it's also very addictive. Yes. And I imagine, especially when you're kind of, you know, you've got people constantly throwing their comments at you, which are great for, for you know, engagement and things mm. like that. And you're constantly looking, you know, at how videos are doing and stuff. Do you, have you struggled with any kind of, you know, addiction, if you will, to to the platform, or, or or are you quite good at being able to know when to switch off and put it to one side and go back to normal life? I'm with social media. I don't seem to be. Um, I don't seem to have that that problem with a, that a lot of people seem to do to be completely addicted to it. I'm. I mm -hmm. find sort of turning my phone off or putting it away kind of quite easy. And, um, I, to be honest, I find, I find things like Twitter and even Instagram quite difficult to actually get into. I've got mm -hmm. like the opposite problem. I think, oh, I should probably look at Instagram because, <laughs> you know, I, should probably, but I just forget, I forget it's there and I go, oh, I haven't posted anything for a while. I should probably post something to keep, because I have to sort of have some sort of social media presence. Um, you know, and there's, there's a lot of great stuff on there as well. Like you go on Instagram and you go like, oh, great. there's lots of, there's, you know, you, you, you can, I can see how people can sort of, uh, get into it, but I, YouTube, I don't feel, I don't feel it in quite the, the same way. YouTube is, I, I see more as being, it's more like TV, I suppose, than, mm -hmm. um, because you know, I don't, I don't comment too much on, on things. Uh, I think that's where it can draw you in. If you get into arguments in comments and stuff, um, especially because as my channel's got more and more kind of traction, um, yeah. any, any comment I make now on any video gets kind of promoted straight to the top. So it doesn't get like, lost in, in threads. So I, I've, I have made some comments on, on videos that have been very, fairly, you know, just nothing, nothing particularly bad, but, um, but it, because they, because my channel has this prominence that, that I get so many replies to those comments, I've had to go and delete them simply because I just can't cope with the amount of replies that people, yeah. you know, and I, I'd like to keep my, my YouTube stuff more, you know, about my work, not, not kind of going, oh, there's another, there's another comment on that video on that, on yeah. that comment on that someone else's video and stuff. So it's, it's quite a, it's quite a difficult, a difficult thing, but I, you know, I've, I've, I've never really had that problem with sort of turning stuff, turning stuff off. Um, I don't know what it is about me. I, I don't seem to be particularly addicted to social media. Um, that's great. I mean, that's not yeah. a bad thing. That's, <laughs> that's not, not a very helpful answer, though. <laughs> Just like, no, but that's, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's good that you, you have that predisposition mm. to disconnect. Yeah. And I think, I think a lot of people do need to do that more. Yeah. Uh, although Sorry, saying but... that, um, the people who comment on my videos, I can get too involved in reading those sometimes and okay. i know i should just leave it alone and yeah. some sometimes is, i'm better at it than other times sometimes i i mean i think when a when a video gets be, a, beyond a certain level of views you just yeah. you you can't you can't cope with the comments on it and i i don't i i don't read every single comment on my on my videos 
<laughs> unfortunately my wife does a lot of the time she'd be like oh, did you see that comment that that person wrote i'm like no i didn't <laughs> oh, thanks for <laughs> thanks for showing me <laughs> um, how does she handle that if, if she sees a comment you know um how does she react to it from, uh, from... oh she's she's very good at um she's very good at sort of disconnecting and stuff she's she's not um she doesn't get she doesn't get worked up by stuff like that. She's one of those really sort of people who just very really chilled out about that sort of stuff and doesn't kind of just, you know, just go, that's just, you know, that's their opinion. That's just yeah. some idiot that I'm not interested in. Um, yeah. Um, and sometimes you have to be like that. You have to just say, yeah. I do not care. Um, yeah. Everyone's got an opinion. And I think yeah. a, most of the time I, it doesn't it just washes over me occasionally someone will will hit on something and sometimes it's not meant as a even a bad comment sometimes mm -hmm. there's there's a criticism or something or it's or there's something that just kind of triggers something that yeah. just winds me up a little bit and okay, or just... what, what pokes the bear with jamie windsor what's like the hang uh, on a minute let uh, me get my digits ready <laughs> um <laughs> i'd rather not say to be honest because okay. i think that people will know um but i yeah. i don't to be honest i don't really know what it is it's just sometimes there's one comment and it will just i think i think often if people if they misunderstand what i'm saying or or they miss they misquote me or something and mm -hmm. then they get really angry about it and i'm like hang on i didn't say that and i don't think that um yeah. and i kind of want to go and defend myself and go no i i didn't say that and that's not yeah. what i'm saying here and um the the trouble with youtube is you can't change the video once it's up you know you no. can't if you if you go oh yeah i should have made that more clear i should have made it more clear what i was saying in that bit you're mm -hmm. just forever then reminded every day of like, um, you know, people just getting the wrong end of the stick with one particular sentence you said. And I think, I think, you know, it is good to kind of let it go over your head as best you can. But I think a lot of consumers need to be more aware of this and how mm. sometimes comments do, do impact the creator. I mean, you know, yeah. not to to put it on me too much, but just very quickly, you know, I, I recently wrote an article about when I went to India to, yeah. to, to do some photography and nothing I said in the article was, um, incorrect or an opinion or even written with a kind of sense of criticism. I actually said yeah. a lot of the things that some people struggle with in India, like the, the smell because of the, the sewage issues, mm -hmm. the animals in the street and the kind of intensity of it. For me, it's part of the charm. And someone commented that I was uh, deeply racist, and and I was like, that was one of the times where I was like, okay, now I'm going to respond to this because I don't think that's a fair kind of of comment. And, and and the point I'm making is that sometimes I think people who watch or read content, you know, they just throw their comments out there as effortlessly as possible, but they forget that you know we're all human beings at the end of the day, mm. and 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 often you know, or sometimes at least. Some of these comments can be quite hurtful and just yeah. because we choose to put ourselves out there with content doesn't mean that we're kind of saying there's a green light to say anything you want and do, do you sometimes feel that people appreciated that more yeah i i mean i do everyone's you know kind of it's it's easy to be like an armchair critic it's easy to yes. and especially with the the anonymity that youtube provides and I, I think it's it's more complex than just thinking I can get away with this because no one mm -hmm. knows who I am. I think it's, I think having that kind of one-sided interaction and also that anonymity just makes you, I think it puts people in a certain psychological place where mm -hmm. it reflects their own feelings a lot more and, they, and they're less inhibited and they, um, to, to say something and I th it's not I, I don't think people would say this stuff if they were just having a conversation with you no. face to face no because not not necessarily just because they 
they feel safer not doing that. And I, I think I think that is a big part of it too. But I think they they create a caricature of you in their head yeah. and they imagine you arguing with them and they imagine yeah. you saying other things and then they they create this kind of straw man and then they they're fighting against that in a way um yeah but yeah everyone everyone could do with being a bit kinder absolutely Definitely. i mean it's um, it's it's a sad space sometimes on the yeah. internet you know and i just think why 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 have we got here in terms of how we communicate with each other how how, how has it got to that point where it's so easy to just you know i'm I'm a northerner, so saying mm. mean things doesn't really bother me that much. But yeah. from a society point of view, it's w why are we so aggressive? It feels so aggressive, you know. <laughs> and sometimes yeah. I read comments on people's YouTube channels and photographers' YouTube channels, and I read them. I think, why are you being that aggressive towards an individual who's just sharing their opinions on street photography ethics, for example? Yeah. And I, I feel we do need to talk about it more and try and shift it because at the same time i feel a lot of people believe oh it's just it's a consequence of what we do you know there's nothing we can do about it but i think by talking about it more and maybe showing how much it can impact the individual yeah who knows it's it's uh it's certainly a, a an important topic and quite a, one that's kind of you know the the internet is in still in such a such a sort of infant stage really we you know we're adapting to it it's it's, it's sprung on us so quickly um yeah and suddenly the world has completely changed and mm -hmm. we we need to we haven't yet worked out kind of emotionally how to how to sort of how to deal with it and no. yeah it's not um it can you know it can be it can really get you down those sort of those comments and criticisms especially when um especially when it's not what it's not what you meant um mm -hmm. i, I yeah. have exactly the same thing i've got a, a video where i i'm just talking about the the legal side of street photography and i'm and i make some comment that you're less likely to get sued by um if you're taking i think i said sort of some photograph of sort of street children in peru or something than if you were to photograph for like a, a celebrity or something and yeah. it was just meant as a factual statement it's yeah. not not a not a statement about morality i'm not saying it's okay to, yeah. to do what you want um but people have inferred that from it and then and i, I've, I have this comment so so much on that on that video and it's kind of i just but i can't go back and go except for it going that's not what i meant i didn't yeah. i didn't mean that was okay i'm literally just talking about legalities and kind yeah. of um i'm so i think you know people they i think i think people need to learn how to how to sort of educate other people as well i think um because there's there's a massive with this massive information um kind of revolution that we've had there's also yeah. been a very fast turnaround of of um social progression and um i think much much faster than than it would have been without this and i think uh there's people i think people are expected sometimes as well to to kind of to to know things and to or to to be familiar with terminology or you know and if and not everyone has that luxury of being kind of able to sort of keep up to date with with yeah. everything um I, I i i often have to google things that people comment on my videos because i don't you know i'm not in i've got you know i've got two kids and i can't I, i'm not i'm not that sort of young person anymore where i can i'm up yeah. to date on all all the all, all that you know all these um 
kind of uh, particular sort of stereotypes and sort of tropes yeah. and everything that people are kind of talking about have become sort of prevalent and they're constantly having to research it and going, oh, that's what you're calling me. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you know, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I can't. Um, yeah, I was, get, I was getting quite annoyed for a while. while I, for a while, everyone's calling me a goat. I'm like, "What's a goat?" I'm like, oh, great, it's all time. I get it, right? Okay. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> um, um, in 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 terms of photography, mm-hmm. um, obviously, you're saying now predominantly uh, you're you're doing the you're doing you. I nearly said doing the YouTube. Doing um, the YouTube. <laughs> 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 you're doing youtube yeah um but do do you i mean of, of course there's also been this thing called a pandemic but like in mm-hmm. terms of actual practical photography like what what kind of is your focus at the moment what what do you enjoy the most uh what do i enjoy the most uh interesting um ah oh, it's weird like the, the pandemic sort of is still kind of like it it, it sort of hit so hard it just it just affected everything really um yeah. I've I've got the I'm shooting my first wedding I've done in ages for in in a couple of weeks um and I I've I've, I've almost sort of uh forgotten sort of w- what it is that I that I kind of I've forgotten sort of ha- how much I enjoy it I think just going yeah. out um I think my favorite thing is is portraits taking portraits of people especially portraits of strangers Mm -hmm. um just just i think just people everyday people just sort of in different kind of scenes um Mm -hmm. i've I've never been particularly into street photography as as a practitioner um that doesn't and not to say that i don't you know love love the work of of many many um street photographers um uh which you know i do very much enjoy it just from uh for myself it's not i don't that doesn't quite satisfy something in me i think i like to i think i like to engage with the person a bit more yeah. i think i like to actually sort of talk to people and um, are you good at that? Are you good at like just going up to a stranger and saying, "Hey, this is who I am, and I'd like to make your photo"? I, w- I, w- I would say no. <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> but I've I've got better at it, and that was you know that was the subject of one of my videos. Was like I cannot, I sort of think I can't do this, but okay. um, but of course I can do this. I just need to, I just need to have the confidence to do it, and um, so it was that's the the, the video is all about that, learning how I how I kind of, uh, learning how I do that and how to, how to sort of think about it. So, so that, you know, I, you, you get sort of confident at it, but it's just, it's one of the things you, you practice and, and, um, some days I'm in more of a mood from it for it than others. Some days yeah. I'll wander out and I just won't feel like approaching anyone. Some days I'll be sort of, running about all over the place going hi can i take your photos you know it's just i i think it just just depending on how i'm feeling more than anything else um and also just realizing that this i think there's so there's such a focus on um on the kind of negative side of taking photographs of people and strangers and stuff uh that it kind of skews your excuse your expectations a little bit and most people are just really kind of happy and friendly and sort of happy yeah. to do it and are interested. And it's not, it's not this kind of world where everyone's kind of out to sort of, is going to start a fight with you because you take a photograph yeah. of them or whatever. It's not, that's, that's such a rare thing. Um, and I think people need to be more aware of that as well. Mm. I, even, you know, I find because I've done a lot of street photography, I've done a lot of street portraits and, yeah. you know, more often than not like you say my experience is positive but when Mm. you get that you know whether it's the one individual looking at you like you're a creep because you're asking to take their photo or if it's someone spotting you making a candid shot and they become confrontational you think oh what if that happens again but you have to really look at it from a more of a a a statistical point of view rather than an emotional point of view uh to keep on doing it and 
you, you say you know you, you have your your good days and bad days in terms of like being up for asking for a for an image but since you've been doing street portraits and you know your confidence has grown in that specific genre has your comf- have you seen an improvement in your kind of day-to-day confidence kind of like oh well if i can ask a stranger to take their photo there's nothing i can't do kind of thing uh, uh, yeah i think uh, the, these things aren't isolated so they it, it affects you just generally and yeah. i i think the one one of the effects of the pandemic uh on a lot of people i think is uh, certainly on me is um you lose that that sort of perspective of the world mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you've sort of lot you know you, you spend too much time on your own and you 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 just your mind just kind of goes down certain um certain kind of avenues and the more you go out mm-hmm. and you you sort of you engage with people and you i just feel you have a better a better grip on the world generally so yeah. um no, i mean confidence is is something you practice really it's, it's more something you do um so i think that you know the more, the more you do it the easier it gets and um also there's you know there's just certain ways of thinking about it um there's a great quote um by david foster wallace that i've i've talked about in my videos before where uh he says um uh your worry what is it it's uh your your worry a lot you'll worry less about what people think of you when you realize how seldom they do and <laughs> um because yep. everyone's just concerned with their own kind of lives Every, there's um everyone there's you know, what's that sort of spotlight syndrome they call it because yep. everyone's everyone in everyone's head their their life is a story in which they're the protagonist <laughs> and you're just some <laughs> random character and yeah. in your in your story you're the protagonist so yeah it matters yeah. more your interaction with them but yeah you know if they if they have a bit if you have a an interaction with someone that doesn't go that well they probably don't think too much about it and then you're there worrying about it and they probably don't even remember they've so they're probably just in a bit of a mood or something and <laughs> yeah really you know um it's so it's kind of um you just need to kind of I think the more you talk to other people, the more you interact with other people, the more you, the, the more you understand other people. I think the key is understanding people and understanding yeah. why people might be um, a bit hesitant or aggressive or something. And you can generally sort of contextualize these things and sort of understand that it's not yeah. really about you because you're not really doing anything wrong because that's yeah. all you can do. You can't control other people. You can only control yourself and so if you make sure that you're doing nothing wrong then you have you know nothing nothing to worry about particularly um you know it's if they have a problem with you and you're not yeah. doing anything wrong then that's their problem now very true very philosophical uh, philosophical as well yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to keep you too much longer, but I just want to just one more question in terms of kind of direction for you, whether that's, you know, out and about doing more weddings. Now things open yeah. up or the direction of your YouTube channel, kind of what, what does that look like for you? What, how, how would you like to see things evolve in the next six to 12 to or so months? Um, I, th- I think g- going back into weddings at the moment, I've sort of realized that the more I've been doing YouTube, the less I like kind of working for someone else in a way and i think yeah. i think a lot of people are sort of f- feeling this sort of thing i think especially after the, the pandemic we've got this thing where people just don't seem to want to go back to work and um <laughs> yeah it's like i've tried not working and it's more fun um <laughs> but uh yeah. the i i really like i think i really value i think it's made me really value um being able to work for myself and being able to do just what I want to do. So, and that, you know, that, that's, you know, if I'm writing a, uh, a YouTube video and I'm researching and I just hit a bit of a block with it, then I know to go and do something else, you know, yeah. there's no, there's no deadline for that. But I also know that, that, that will translate if I'm forcing myself, if I don't have that passion for it, I think it will come out mm-hmm. in the video. So I don't, I don't ever want to, I only want to make a video that I'm really, I'm really passionate about. I'm really 
because I think I think it comes through. So, I uh, and I, the thing about working for for other people is it is you um you end up sort of I don't know. I, I suppose uh, the thing the thing with the weddings weddings are you know on the day it's kind of great and you just get mm -hmm. that buzz and then and then. Uh, I think the, the the best thing is probably after you've delivered the photos because the one that's one of the reasons I like weddings is, is because it's not corporate and it's not yep. it's, it's they photos that really mean something to people and people really look down on it as a as a sort of a, a photographic medium but it's 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 something that really just you know you, you're you're creating work that will be kind of I think cherished more than yeah than some you know like a like a fashion shoot or yeah well, you know that's the, the the things that are generally a bit more respected in the in the photographic world which is ridiculous because i think wedding mm. photography is one of the most diff I've, I've never done it nor will i ever do it <laughs> um i probably don't have the capabilities to do it to be honest with you but it's it's probably from an outside perspective to me one of the most difficult genres of photo photography you're dealing with a lot of people, mm. a lot of personalities, a lot of alcohol consumption. Oh yeah, and it's 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 for many, you know, unless they're you know serial um, divorcees and yeah, mar you know, marrying again. But for most people, it's it's that one day for the rest of their that's, lives. That's the big thing. You can't mess it up. Like you can't, you can't mess it up because can you, you get married again because the exposures. Oh yeah, quite right sorry, on. I have my camera on the wrong setting. <laughs> Can we redo the ceremony? No, it doesn't work. <laughs> you have to, you have to get it right on the day. You have to be that, yeah. you have to be that confident in yourself to know that, that what you're, you know, what, what you're doing will, will work. Um, yeah. so that, that's, a. I, I think, I think I suppose that with that, with that sort of in mind, the more, the more you do it, the more kind of confidence you have in yourself and go, actually, no, yeah. I do know what I'm doing. I do know how to cope with this. And I do know, um, and I, th but, um, yeah, I need to, I, I feel like I need to get sort of back into photography and also just making videos. I've sort of slowed down during the pandemic. It's just more difficult to make videos from both yeah. a practical standpoint with my kids being off school, being at home and, uh, you know, just um, homeschooling them, so I can't make be making videos and just <laughs> stuff everywhere. And um, but also just mentally, I just haven't had that because I haven't been having those interactions. I haven't been getting that that passion. So I've yeah. kind of slowed down, and my 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 channel growth's kind of slowed down. And I, I need to get that. I need to pick it up again and go back yeah. to sort of what I was what I was doing before because that's. Yeah, I just need to get back into it, and I think um, yeah. it, I think it will. I think it will happen naturally. I'm just uh, yeah, especially with things yeah. opening up, kids going back to school. Yeah, you know, hopefully the Weddings whole again. there's a pandemic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, okay, well, obviously, you're out there, and I'll give you a quick opportunity. Uh, people will be if they haven't seen your work yet or, or your videos, they'll they'll certainly want to after this. So, where can they find you? Uh. Well, in terms of my YouTube videos, if you just search for Jamie Windsor on YouTube, I'll pop up. Um, JamieWindsor.com is my website, <laughs> or yeah. at Jamie Windsor on Instagram. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> Excellent, mate. Well, this has been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, and thank you. Uh, good luck with uh, getting back into the swing of things, especially now Britain is uh, is slowly opening up and uh yeah i look forward to seeing what you start putting out and uh continue to put out over the next six to twelve months i appreciate you speaking with me brilliant thank you very much it's been a, been a Cheers, pleasure buddy well thanks again to jamie for speaking with me guys if you enjoyed the episode then please do subscribe put your comments below as well we'd love to know what you thought and also share it with everyone else we'll be back again next week with another episode of the photographers inside the photographer's mind cheers